Good morning, good morning. Marmalade here for episode two of What I've Learned on the PCT. And I've got some good questions here for you today and I can't wait to get going with it. So let's get on it right away. Uh, my first one is from somebody named Mountain Cat 8 He's very active on my channel. I appreciate you and does ask a lot of questions. Um, I'm just gonna read it. Uh, when you take photos during your PCT hikes, how do you keep track of what each photo is about? Do you create a folder for each day of hiking and place all the photos for that day in there? Uh, maybe there is a way to label each photo with a mileage marker. Your wisdom on this matter would be great appreciate, greatly appreciated. I don't know if I have lots of wisdom, but I have a lot of experience. As of October, what is today? October 10th, I have 569 videos. It's hard to believe, man, I'm, I'm encroaching on uh, 600, but um, I actually thought about this a lot, uh, Mountain Cat. So I don't have, you can ask my son, I don't have the best memory for a lot of things. But when I'm on the trail and I, you know, I kind of unfortunately now that I think about it, I chose to do a daily video for every single day on the PCT. Uh, in the future, I'm going to do something different in, in group group days in there so it's easier to watch. But uh, I started out doing that. I'm, I think I have 122 days on trail, so I have 122 plus videos. So it's been a lot of work, especially trying to upload that stuff on trail when you're in these small towns. But um, I thought about that. This year I did uh, 20 something days on trail. And I take about, I would say on a normal day, not, not day hiking and overnight weekend trips, but like on a normal day on the PCT, I take between 30 and 80 either video clips, pictures, or those two together. So 30 to 80, and it's a lot. Uh, I do not have a file, but the reason why I don't is I'm a little technically challenged, but also uh, in my iPhone, uh, it actually separates it by day. So I, it has the date, shows everything you took that day. And when I'm on trail, I'm not doing anything else besides hiking. I'm not in town on a store or taking pictures of the ocean or anything. I'm on trail. So all my pictures are for uh, my videos. So that separates them by date. And uh, I do a couple things. I have a really good memory for on trail. So uh, I'm not good with lake names or trail spur names, that kind of stuff. but. Uh, I remember what I did, what I saw, right here's where we did this or that. I remember that just when I see the pictures, it all comes back in my memory. The other thing I started doing this year that I was bad about was that you guys don't see in the clips is that when I'm coming up on a lake, and let's say I'm not, I don't have the camera on me, but I'm, I'm walking on the trail and I show the pr pretty view and then I show a lake or a pass or something that's uh, something to talk about in the video, or maybe I want to put a text in there. I say it on my video so you guys can't hear it. I edit it out, but I'll say, coming up on Silverado Lake and uh, this is mile marker 322 or whatever and I say whatever uh, it's elevation 10,200 I'll say all that in the video so I don't have to remember it later I'll look at my app uh, before I film it and just kind of look at the elevation and what it's called and anything pertinent about it and I put that in my video so that uh, I'd say that before I start filming the good part that I want to show and then I edit that out but that's where I can uh, put in text I like to I'm trying to talk less in my videos and uh, and just do my intros usually on the PCT and on all my hikes. Um, but just do an intro, maybe a closing at the end of the night, but try not to talk too much and just let uh, the text speak for itself. Wow, I got some bird. I think he's gonna attack me. <laughs> anyway, I hope that answers your question for you. All right, so my next question is from somebody named Stephen Martin. He asked, uh, what advice would you give regarding hiking on snow for miles and miles all day? Have you ever used seal skin or neoprene over boots to keep your feet dry and warm or is it not worth it so I live in San Diego probably the least amount of snow almost anywhere in the United States I don't know I know there's a lot more places without snow like in Florida places but uh, we don't deal with snow a lot here but I will say I have some experience and um, on my through hike attempt in 2019 I'll try to put a couple pictures in here it was an El Nino winter so when I started in March 26 and did the desert over the next six weeks or so uh, we went over uh, Mount San Jacinto uh, Big Bear Ski Resort area, Wrightwood, and that was just um, just in the desert portion. Once we got past that, more north of it, it got warmer and we got less high, high peaks, so uh, there wasn't snow, but uh, I have a decent amount of experience on that, and how do I deal with it? Well, uh, I've never used a neoprene or waterproof socks or any of that stuff. I've never used it. Not that I wouldn't in the future. I would, uh, depending on the right trip, I'd probably uh, consider it, but I didn't do that. Uh, I run warm. So when I'm in the snow, I wear my um, trail runners in the snow. Uh, they get soaked and my socks get soaked, And but my feet don't tend to get cold. I think it's because I'm hiking and exerting so much energy. 
Um, the other way I combated it was with micro spikes. And um, I did not, I probably should have, I didn't have a ice axe through those three sections I told you about in Southern California, but uh, uh, the micro spikes really, really helped. So I know that uh, I ended up not going to the Sierras because there was too much snow, but I know the people that go to the Sierras, uh, you know, use the micro spikes. You have to have an ice axe to be safe in case you slip and for self-arresting. And uh, if the snow is really bad, which is probably in my years, maybe crampons are better than micro spikes. But uh, I really like my micro spikes. I'd never used them until my through hike. And uh, I felt, although I did fall a lot, I'm a bigger guy. And uh, on side slopes, uh, sometimes the trail get blown out and my footsteps get blown out and I'd slip and fall. I post hold a lot. Um, the main thing to answer your question, the best way to do snow is really, if you've ever watched people doing the trail in the Sierras, because normally there's not that kind of snow in Southern California. It's mostly, except for a big snow year in the Sierras. So the way you do this is you get up really early and you get your miles in early. You wanna walk on top of the snow. You wanna wait for it to freeze over so it freezes overnight. A lot of the hikers that did the Sierras in the snow get up at one, two, three in the morning and start hiking. And you know, it's, it's tough. It's really cold and it's dark, but you start hiking and you can hike to midday and get, you know, it's very, very slow going and very physically demanding. For me, I post hole a lot because I'm heavy. So um, I was having to extricate myself from these holes. I, got, I wear shorts when I hike, so I was getting my legs cut up. And, and the, obviously the ice and snow is super cold and I was soaked. And um, so, you want to get up early and hike and get your miles in by noon or one or two and then once the snow starts melting and gets slushy um, then you kind of have to quit because you're just going to get beat up and really not make much progress but I, I know a lot of people that i've watched in the sierra during the heavy snow year can only get you know six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve miles in and they're spent and that's a lot of miles uh it's a it's a good amount of miles in the sierras anywhere but when you're dealing with that kind of snow uh, you don't even see the trail you're just going on there and um, you know, you're also dealing with sun cups, which are the big dips in the snow that kind of melt and then freeze. But if you get up early and you get going, you get your mileage in early, uh, you can get some decent mileage in and then set up camp and rest. Okay, my third one is from somebody I know, Eric Klein. Eric, thanks so much for this question. And then he asked me, um, Mike, how about your experience with different shoes you use on the PCT? So I've tried a lot of different shoes on the PCT, but and a lot of shoes not on the PCT, but I'll talk about the PCT. So. Um, if you followed me at all, you know, I started in 19 and then got hurt after 902 miles. So every year I've been going back since and doing sections. So um, my first year in 19, um, I had the, the Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s. To me, one of the best shoes I've ever tried on. And it was weird in 19, it seemed like, and I, I don't know the percentages, but it seemed like 75% or more of the people had them. They had tons of room in the foot box, super comfortable, high stack height, super cushy and comfortable and never got blisters, whatever, but uh, it's, a, it's a trail runner. And um, so that's what I had. And uh, I'll try to put pictures of these, each models as I'm talking about them. And so I had bought six pair of them because I was gonna go through, being a bigger guy, I wear shoes out about 400, 450 miles. So I did the math and needed about six pairs of shoes. So I got hurt after two pairs of shoes. So I had a lot of extra shoes and I actually gave a few to some friends and stuff. But uh, uh, so that was a 19. In 2020, I actually tried the Topo uh, Ultra Ventures, Ultra Ventures, Topo Ultra Ventures. And um, I really liked them. I did uh, Ashland, Oregon up to Ben and Sisters. And I had them before that. I'd hiked a little bit just to get a, not break them in, but it was a different tra uh, trail shoe than uh, Ultra for me. So I wanted to make sure I liked them and they fit my feet well, but very comfortable, a little more, um, very comfortable, but a little more firm and rigid. It was kind of a mix. The feel when I wore them was kind of like, um, a trail runner but kind of like a boot somewhere in the middle it also had a it was a much um the one downfall to my first shoe the ultra lone peak 3.5s is man my feet got bruised from all the small rocks poking through on the trail and just they were so soft they were comfortable but they they didn't protect your feet from a lot of the sharp rocks where the topos did i could walk on a lot of that stuff and it didn't i couldn't feel it through i don't know if it had a rock plate or not but it was very comfortable so that was uh 19 then last year or that's 2020 excuse me 2021 when i did um Canyon Meadows South, and I was going up to Truckee, but uh, like 500 miles, but I got pushed out near Red's Meadow because of the Dixie Fire in Northern California, and they closed all the National Forest on me, and that was after I did all the major passes in the Sierras and did Whitney. So um, I had the, which is probably my overall favorite shoe I've had in the seri a series, is the Temp 3. I had the Temp 3 and um, bought a couple pair for that, that trip, and really loved it. Um, had no issues with it, wore well. I mean, right, I don't know what it is, but about four, four, 400 to 450, my shoes just start falling apart. 
and they get compressed so they're not comfortable anymore so that's when I have to switch out but I only made it about almost 300 miles that year because of of everything closing down I could there's nowhere to hike so uh, that was a very good shoe and this year honestly I really wanted to try the tip fours that completely changed it and the problem is they changed they came out with the ultra came out with a new Lone Peak 6 and a, and a temp four and I really have always loved the temps but the, the Lone Peak sixes came out I happen to work at REI and I get a I get a price break on them and uh, I really wanted to try out the four the temp fours but they were delaying and delaying and delaying and the sixes were out so I waited and waited and then the temp fours finally came out just purely like a week or two before I was gonna go on and get on the trail and I wasn't willing to just you know, sight unseen uh, buy them I needed a two pair because I was going 800 miles I don't want to pay for them without knowing if they fit my feet well I don't want to deal with blisters or my feet killing me things like that um, at work I'm able to try shoes on and wear them like while I'm working just uh, you know seeing if they're comfortable and the Lone Peak sixes felt really great so that's what I wore and I bought two pair and um, I ended up going just shy of 400 miles so I never got I still have the other pair that I'll wear once the ones I have now are worn out but uh, I've really loved them I mean the Lone Peaks overall has been a great series. I, I once had not on the PCT, but I had the Temp 2. Point, or excuse me, Temp 1.5s, which were awesome. I got the Temp 2s. They changed it, and I don't get blisters. My feet are all conditioned. I got blisters every single time I wore those shoes. So um, I just I had to put uh, duct tape on my heels when I do local hikes just to get my wear out of them. So I finally wore those out and threw them away. But um, yeah, they they changed the heel cup or something. So. I would say, uh, you're not asking me to rank them, but I would say the, either the Lone Peaks, oh man, they're all good. I would say, this is a hard choice really. I would say the Temp 3s from, from 2021 were my favorite. And then really it's a tie between the Lone Peak 6s and the 3.5s. They're both really good, they're different. And then Topo's last, but they were all great. I wouldn't buy them and I wouldn't go on long distance hiking if I didn't like them. But uh, that's what I like. Tell me what you guys like. What do you guys wear? And you know what's weird about shoes is that's why I don't do a lot of gear videos saying that this is the greatest shoe or you should get this because their feet are all different, right? And so that's like we're all supposed to wear the same glasses or something. It's like uh, feet, uh, shoes are personal. So I might sometimes do a video on why I like something, but I would never recommend it to somebody or say you got to get these because of this, this, and this because we're all different, right? So I uh, hope that answers a question that was a long answer for a, a, a good question. All right, guys, the last question for this episode two is from a f friend of mine that I know, Washington Mike. Yes, he lives in Washington. And um, he's, he asks, how do you transition from hiking to filming in an efficient manner? How much time do you estimate filming consumes in one day? Editing has to be hard on trail. What do you do? This is, a, I love this question. I've been asked a lot. You guys tell me down below if you'd like me to make a video. I've been asked a lot over the years to make a video on how I film, in other words, I don't know if you want to know like I could do a video on how the kind of shots I do whether I slow motion or pan like the actual physical way I do it do you want to know you know the whole process like you know uh, once I get the how do I edit it how do I upload those kind of things or is it just more the different ways that you can film when you're on trail I think that's probably the, what I want to do is just show the different ways that I shoot uh, on a and it's really progressed over the years I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube of people using I use an iPhone how the different ways it shots and, and uh, kind of things you can create with just an iPhone. So uh, if you'd like a video on that, let me know. But I'm glad he asked this question because uh, I don't know if you guys appreciate, if you've never vlogged, you don't appreciate what it takes on the PCT to vlog. Um, and to answer your question, let me see the first part of the question. Um, sorry for that noise, there's some kids over here. Uh, they have like a preschool over here and they're playing, so that's okay. I hope you can hear me okay. So um, what I was saying, uh, basically, I don't know if you guys understand how much time, if I'm on trail for 12 hours and I'm filming as much as I do, I told you I probably get 30 to 80 different, I do mostly video now, less still pictures. Sometimes I do that just for some photographs of stunning parts, but I basically video most of the time, but I have 30 to 80 clips a day. And imagine stopping every single time you do that. Every once in a while I'm walking down the trail and filming, but even then I slow down so I don't fall down or trip. But the amount of time that it takes away from my hiking that doesn't count for my breaks or getting water or those kind of things or going to the bathroom. Just purely, I would say, the way I, I have an answer for you, though, I was trying to figure this out. When I throw those 30 to 80 clips into a video to do it, it tells me before it's edited down how much time how much time all these clips has total. And so these videos are usually about 
uh, 18 to 60 minutes long. So that means I have stopped or filmed on trail that day like 18 minutes to 60, 60 minutes a day. So that means I've taken away, um, you know, if I hike at a normal pace now, this is, if it's flat and open, I can hike three miles an hour, no problem. That's, it's a, that's a mile every 20 minutes, three miles an hour. So if I just, if I just film for 20 minutes, I've lost a mile on the trail in 20 minutes. So imagine when I've got 60 minutes of video, I've lost three miles and that adds up if you're doing a through hike. And so it adds up on my day, it ends up where I end up every day. Um, I do a lot of walk bys and that's where I set the camera and I walk by, then I've got to come back. So I do bonus miles. So there's a lot of that. So, um, there's, there's a big commitment when you want to vlog, if you want to do it well and properly, you know, you can just take a couple pictures and that doesn't really slow you down much, but I really try to take it to another level and try to bring the best, you know, product I can to you. And, um, uh, how do I do this efficiently? Well, uh, it's funny, I've mentioned before that like through hiking, I'll take about a, a half hour, about a 20 minute, 30 minute break uh, in the morning, like eight, nine, 10 o'clock for like a breakfast. And then I try to take a lunch break for about a half hour around one-ish or something. It's never exact, but, um, so I got people driving by here. But, all right, the perils of filming in a public park. So, um, but the reason why filming works okay for me because when I stop, like I could do a climb, right? I want to get, I want to film the pass. Well, I can be really tired and out of breath. When I get to a pass, I can set up the camera and do a walk by. And essentially when I've taken a minute or two to do this, if I'm not stopping for a break, it actually becomes my break. It becomes a, you know, normally when we do a climb, a lot of us and you're tired, you stop for a minute and you want to catch your breath. I do it all the time on trail. And my filming becomes little breaks during my day. So it's a weird thing. I, I, I know that if I never filmed, if I never pulled my camera out, I'd be much faster and much farther and get done much sooner every day, or at least be able to go further every day on trail. But, but I feel like in a weird way, filming helps me take my little breathers or my little breaks. If I want to stop and get a beautiful pan of the valley, right, and I'm out of breath, then I can do that. And it's kind of like uh, if I wasn't filming, I probably would have stopped there and caught my breath anyway. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, I feel like uh, over time I've become as as refined and as efficient as possible. I have other secrets of how I do things faster, and that could be in that video I talked about. So let me know if you uh, if you want to see that in the video. I'd be glad to make that. It'll take some time to kind of show all the different shots I do, but uh, it might interest you guys. But uh, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, those are great questions. I, uh, from the last video, I got some more questions, so we have we'll still get to go for a while. But please leave me some questions about the PCT specifically. Or it could be about gear or, you know, like we had a question about shoes, but just about what you think about if you're not a through hiker and you wonder about us out there and what, what we go through. I've been, I've done 122 days video, so I've been on trail out in the wilderness for 122 days. So I've experienced a lot of good things. So let me know if you have any other questions and um, please consider subscribing, liking, and hitting the notification bell over here uh, if you'd like to be notified every time I post a video. And that's it for episode two. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.